As the COVID-19 pandemic has shown, international collaboration among scientists is critical. But that's nothing new. The Lindau Nobel Laureate Meeting has been bringing together scientists from around the world since 1951, connecting a diverse international community of scientists across generations with the aim of identifying solutions to the most demanding problems of our time, providing the impetus to connect science and society throughout our 70-year history. Back then, in the fallout of World War II, the idea of scientists working together was not taken for granted. Indeed, many feared the exact opposite. In Lindau, Franz Karl Hein and Gustav Wilhelm Parade came up with the idea of bringing together researchers and Nobel laureates from across Europe. They aimed to bring an end to Germany's scientific isolation. The two physicians approached Swedish royal family member Count Lennart Bernadotte to become a co-founder. He showed great enthusiasm for their idea and brought in his valuable contacts and support. The meeting was conceived as a way to reconnect scientists and begin new dialogues. In 1951, the first European meeting of Nobel laureates in medicine gathered seven Nobel laureates and around 400 scientists in Lindau. Ich habe die Ehre, die erste Europatagung der Nobelpreisträger 1951 für Preisträger der Medizin und der angrenzenden Gebiete zu eröffnen. Lindau, die Inselstadt, verbindet sich mit Mainau, der Schlossinsel, und gemeinsam wollen sie alles tun, um der ersten Europatagung zum vollen Erfolg zu verhelfen. And the Swedish King Gustav VI Adolf sent his greetings. Scientists who had left Nazi Germany could return and reconciliation for the entire international scientific community could begin. Count Lennart became president of the council. He would come to significantly influence the following decade's meetings. Liebe junge Freunde, haben Sie keine Angst. Sie beißen nicht, ich kann es versichern. Ich, uh ich bin seit 40 Jahren mit Ihnen zusammen. Ich habe keine Wunde, wie Sie sehen. Es ist alles in bester Ordnung. Ich wünsche Ihnen einen guten Kontakt zu diesen hervorragenden Menschen vor allem. Und das sollen Sie mit nach Hause nehmen, wenn Sie von Lindau wegfahren. In 1987, he was succeeded by his wife, Countess Sonja, who focused on internationalizing participation. And in 2008, their daughter, Countess Bettina, became president of the council. In 1954, Albert Schweitzer became the first Nobel Peace Prize laureate to attend the meeting. And in 1955, laureates primarily with a background in nuclear research gathered to adopt the Mainau Manifest, denouncing the development and use of atomic weapons. Mainau because traditionally the last day of the meeting takes place on the home island of the Bernadotte family. Right from the beginning, the meeting would alternate every year between physics, chemistry, and physiology or medicine. The young people who were working in my physics laboratory, uh, two of them shared the Nobel Prize for chemistry, and two of them shared the Nobel Prize for medicine. There is therefore, Count Bernadotte, no reason that I can see why you should not invite me every year to... Uh... That is, of course, if you like to do so. In 1971, Count Lennart Bernadotte put environmental protection at the heart of the meeting. Just a year later, German Chancellor and Nobel Peace Prize laureate Willy Brandt held a lecture titled Environmental Protection as an International Task. Man sollte daraus die Lehre ziehen, dass es insgesamt schon viel später ist, als wir denken möchten. Maßnahmen, die wir heute ergreifen, werden unheilvolle Prozesse unter Umständen erst in Jahren unter Kontrolle bringen können. Since 1959, the meetings have grown beyond Europe. In 1971, the German Academic Exchange Service began to support the Lindau Nobel Laureate meetings. And since 1980, the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation has worked with the meetings. Today, there are about 200 academic partners worldwide. 
when we started reaching out internationally. The laureates said, we are very, very happy that this is now turning into a very international meeting. The 1980s saw the Lindau Nobel Laureate meetings ties to Stockholm strengthen as the secretary of the Nobel Committee for Physics, Professor Bengt Nagel, 1982, and the executive director of the Nobel Foundation, Baron Stig Rammel, 1983, visited Lindau. Alfred Nobel would have loved to be here. I'm sure that meetings of this kind is what he had in mind when he established his prizes to the benefit of mankind. Today, it is a bond based on trust and friendship, reflected in cooperative projects like the Sketches of Science exhibition. The President of the Council visits Sweden regularly, and the Council has even been invited to hold its General Assembly in Stockholm. And there has always been a close relationship between the Lindau Nobel Laureate meetings and the Swedish Crown. The new millennium brought several landmark events. The first interdisciplinary meeting was held, and the Foundation Lindau Nobel Laureate meetings was established through 50 Nobel laureates in memory of Count Lennart. Today, it counts more than 340 laureate members. The financial support of the Foundation allowed the meetings to leave a lasting impact well beyond one week a year. Through the development of international relationships and the continued development of collaborative projects. In 2007, thanks to a donation of the building by patrons, the permanent executive office was expanded, allowing for Lindau's work to continue year-round. Activities today include the Lindau Science Trail, also aimed at young researchers, the Lindau Media Tech with free online educational materials, the Lindau Alumni Network, the Platform Mentoring Hub, and the Lindau Exhibitions, such as the Nobel Portraits and the Sketches of Science. In 2015, a new agreement at Mainau, 76 Nobel laureates, led by Brian Schmidt, signed the Mainau Declaration to warn world leaders of the urgency of climate change. It was presented to policymakers in advance of the United Nations COP21, the conference that led to the Paris Agreement. The Inselhalle was completely renovated from 2015 to host meetings and events in Lindau. And in 2018, it was here that Nobel laureate Elizabeth Blackburn first introduced the Lindau guidelines for open, cooperative science in the 21st century. Well, it's a bold new vision, but we need to know what to aspire to and to have a goal that could act as a North Star. So let's see what happens when we apply a Paris Agreement-like model directly to imagining Perhaps beginning now, a Lindau agreement. And then COVID happened. For the first time in the history of the Lindau meetings, Nobel laureates and young scientists did not meet personally on site, but got together virtually for the Online Science Days 2020. New concepts and interactive formats provided the platform for the different generations to continue to enjoy connecting during extraordinary times. In the age of global challenges, the mission of the Lindau Nobel Laureate meetings lives on. Educating, inspiring and connecting is more important and relevant than ever. Sometimes science can be quite a lonely space, but it's not lonely at Lindau. Here you have loads of people in one place who share your struggles and your hopes and your excitement to support science in all its forms, and I think that's just amazing. So one of the nice things about the Lindau structure is we can look forward to many years of seeing uh, future generations of students and of laureates and uh, seeing what becomes. These are key people all from all over the world and I want them to understand that one of the reasons that there's a conflict in a lot of people's minds, in the public's minds with regard to science, is that it's the construct that human beings have developed to determine what is true, what could be true and what might be true. Your ambitions will shape tomorrow's world. Be curious, be passionate, but also be wise. I am very curious about your views in this regard and hope to hear back from you one way or the other. Enjoy your meeting. Goodbye. 70 years ago, the founders had a dream, and that dream endures in the scientists and Nobel laureates of the future.